Yo, what's going on guys? We're gonna be using the new items on Talia here in preseason 14. We're gonna be looking for Storm Surge Rush first. It's the best thing about jungles. You don't really need a mana item first and Storm Surge doesn't give you any mana. It's very cheap, lots of AP penetration, movement speed, and it also has a lot of burst on it and movement speed on its passive. So it's perfect for jungle. Not necessarily the most consistent item for a laner because you might find yourself running out of mana. That is something to keep in mind, but for Talia, it's literally perfect. We're gonna go Storm Surge into Sork Shoes. We'll have enough penetration to do true damage against anyone who hasn't built any magic resist. And then we can build more magic penetration with Shadow Flame. Currently on AP junglers, full penetration is the best way to play it because most champions items don't give magic resist uh, super early on. So you're effectively doing true damage. It's the best way to play magic damage at the moment. I've tried all the other builds. Now, if your champion can utilize Leandri's effectively, then that's fine. Like a Lilia or Brand. A Leandri burn is twice as strong. I actually will end up getting a Leandri's at some point in this game because they have a Cho'Gath, so we'll see. Their Cho'Gath already got a solo kill. Holy fudge muffins. My top laner must have DC'd. Because Cho'Gath level 1 is nah, not that great. At least not for just like straight up killing people. We're always going to queue off of our worked ground because it puts our Q on a lower cooldown and it also stuns monsters. That's the cool thing about Talia jungle. She's really easy. You pretty much always want to queue off your work ground evening as champions as well. It's never bad to do it. Long, long time ago, queuing off work ground was kind of bad, but these days you pretty much, if you have the option, you want to do it. And this is awkward. And we'll push them through our dub through our E. Whenever you push something through your E, it will stun it and do lots of damage. Or if they jump. So we finished 320 with leash. Not horrible. We're full health, no potion needed. We're gonna ghost over to this wall. We can stay on our skateboard the whole time. We're gonna get down our E auto. Oh, he's going a weird way. I mean he has a ghost on, so it's kind of impossible to land skill shots on this guy. The fact he killed Shaco without Ghost, Shaco had to have uh, DC'd. It's the only way that makes any sense. So now I don't have Ghost. Still full health, though. We're chilling and grilling. I'm going to hold on to my E and W. Ooh, this chick's here. I'm going to push her on back. Mm, yeah, she does a lot of damage. I'm going to go for opposite side Scuttle. We did some decent damage. We're out clearing her. We're making faster time. We want to try to stay near the walls, stay on our board. So much movement speed. We're moving uh, a faster than a champion with tier 1 boots. Close to tier 2 boots when we are on our board. Potential gank bot side. They have back, so she's got long sword. We don't even really have an item since jungle item effectively does nothing against champions. I'm pretty weak in this situation. I do still have red buff though. Get him with an EW. Got the pushback. I got the kill. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> we definitely need that more. The best person to put your gold on early game is the jungler because they get to interact with the most champions. So if your laner is taking kills from you and you're playing a carry jungler, that, that is uh, not fun. We always want to try to E first or red buff auto slow first. That way our W and Q can land. Because our E is the easiest to land skill shot. It really just goes down in close to instantly. It's a slow. Drop the EW. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to drop Q here. Although your Q or your special Q when you're on work ground are AoE. The AoE damage is limited, so you want to make sure the small monsters aren't blocking you from the big ones. I need a back here in a moment. Cho'Gath's kind of low. I'll go gank him here in a second. So here, I really want to make sure the big one's getting hit, and I'll cross over into Cho'Gath. Potentially gank TF. He doesn't have a lot of items. Oh, jeez. That is, uh, it's still re- Bro, come on. I'm well within inside of his patience range, and he's still hard resetting. Dirty. All right, get him with a Q. Get him with an E, W back. He's so screwed. Uh, 
kind of damage over time abilities like the Q on my my Talia Q won't wake them up. It just won't because they want Zoe Bubble to feel good for Zoe. So even if you're blasting someone with an MFR <coughs> and the Zoe sleep goes off, <gasps> the MFR won't wake them up. Which is a pretty good synergy we have with Zoe at the moment. We want to go for Storm Surge. Let's go Hextech. We'll go this. This, this, and this. All right, I actually prefer that. I would like to have some movement speed. You can go for uh, Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter is good. I think Relentless Hunter is better though. I, I kind of prefer Antalia. She's such a spam ganker, although she can heavy clear. We're moving 404 right now, guys, literally without boots. Champions with tier two boots move a roughly 380. So we're faster than tier two boots champions without actually having boots. So what makes Talia kind of nuts. So even if you don't like the fact that she's skill shot heavy, boohoo, just play Talia. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. I like how this guy always has a ghost. It's so much fun that when I gank him, it, I literally can't kill him no matter what I do. Man, probably shouldn't come back for this Shaco. Could have been mid and actually done something. It, he doesn't, I don't know. We're not going top again. He's 15 CS, 0 1. For all I know, he's 900 ping or it's like a six year old playing on his older brother's account. He is not, uh, he's not performing. Not at all. We'll play around bot and mid. Zoe CS is very low as well. Maybe I should focus more on my bot lane. Hitting a kind of late level six. Hitting an eight minute mark as a jungler is slightly on the slower side. I mean, ganking top so much, wasting my ghost. Uh, TF's kind of low, but there's the other two people are not low, so I don't know. Might not be worth. Might not be worth my time. Pop him back, get him inside of his patience range, stun him out. Zoe just got killed, dang. <laughs> this game's getting out of control. Our bot lane is hinging the game right now. What happens there is going to decide everything. The other two lanes are. Somewhat doomed. We'll auto her and go through. I'm gonna hold on to W because I'm already in auto and Q range. Just in case he flashes, you have to stand still to cast W. So if you don't need to cast it, you might as well not. It gives him an outplay angle. Please, dragons aren't really that fast because you can't stun them. So I mean, you're still taking quite a bit of damage. She doesn't have any ability that does particular bonus damage against epic monsters. I don't think Nefari jungle is a good pick. You might as well just play Kha'Zix. Nefari mid's pretty good though. Oh yeah, Cho'Gath's still getting the solo kills. We have to get Leandre's this game to handle Cho'Gath. Otherwise, he's going to be too strong. It's time to reset. I can path over all this dead space or I can go back and get a full item and still get here reasonably quickly. We got Storm Surge, Control Ward. Oh, I need more health. <clears throat> I'm going to have a little bit more HP than that. You might say, a good Cho'Gath. Well, if you see Shaco, he might run. Looking at his items, he's probably sitting on close to full item right now. Because I'm full item. We're equal kills, equal CS. So he's going to reset. And he's going to have Ghost too. I'm not worrying for that. He's getting solo kills, not even using sums. It's wild. We can go mid with R. I haven't actually used my R yet. I haven't needed it. We'll go and use R once our uh, W's up. Got it. Big AOE Q, stuns everything. Weaving in autos makes your clear so much faster and your autos don't cancel your Qs. the heck what is she doing what are you doing she's on the scuttle crab 
I kind of just wasted my ghost low key. Oh, I'm dead. That's sad. <laughs> I wasted my ghost pretty hard. Nefuri's awkwardly tanky. She always looks squishy, but she has a huge self shield. That's my bad. Even though we're faster, literally, because we're on our board, she hits that speed up and it's so freaking strong. It makes the catch up time take way too long. That's on me though. I know I shouldn't be playing around my mid and top. My mid and top are some of our weaker lanes right now. That's on me. TF comes in and bites my head off. Auto in the queue. Nice. Maybe I can use my R here. Oh no, I can't. Never mind. I'll take it back. <laughs> well, never. We're not allowed to. Thought TF was about to walk into me. I guess not. I'll go catch mid wave. I'm not going top. At least he's going for Leandries. That'll be good against Cho'Gath. Go another point E. We'll save R and gank bot lane here in a moment. So they come back to lane together, I presume. Our Cho's going to get hecka fed, man. It's going to get very big. They wouldn't have warded that spot, I don't think. Just to be safe, we'll wait. They were in base for a while there. We were in 445. We went with Hunter plus our board. Yeah, they, they're not really paying attention to me at all. Get the E down into W. That's a double knock. Let's go, baby. I need to pick up Dark Slot at this point. We got the way R off that. That's huge. Oh, wait. I literally control warded for Shaco topside. Am I on crack? Why did I ward for that guy? Should have warded for my bot lane, because I'm going to repeat gank them. The Nefari's kind of fed right now. She's so tanky. She's got like 5 shields and 10 self heals. She has to... I think she has to attack you, though. I only see it when she goes in on enemies. When she's just walking away, I don't really see it. Their bot lane might rotate mid. Trist is getting a lot of work done. She gets stunned though. I'm going to ghost for this. Kaisa no R. Oh, she actually took that. Is she crazy? We don't get the knockback, but she is slowed. Zoe missed absolutely everything. Oh my goodness. She could hit <laughs> everything. She slowed tier 1 boots around walls. She has very li little movement options there. Let's push Sork Shoes into Shadow Flame. Need penetration. If you're not penetrating, you're not doing anything, let me tell you. Three seconds, can we make it? We don't. We're just a little bit faster. We'll gank bot lane again. Kaisa should have no R. The amount of damage Kaisa does with one item is outrageous. Kraken is super overtuned, I think, right now. Kraken and Shojin are both very, very strong items for uh, Season 14. Mm, we should probably take Dragon. Shogat's top. He's not going to be top for much longer in the first top as well. He's not going to be top for much longer, I assume, because he's already taken turret now. He just took it. I'm not going to smite it. It's no point. There's nobody here. I only have one smite charge as well. Kind of want to have that for the gank. Bard gets the stun. We get down the EWQ. That sucks. I missed. That's so unfortunate. He flashed right as he came out of uh, the bard stun. It was a good bard R. I'm extremely low. If she hits me with the missile, she can R to me and pretty much kill me instantly. 
Wait, are these level one Krugs? Does she actually never take her Krugs? What the heck? No clue what's warded right now. <clears throat> I should probably stand right here. This bush is. This bush isn't. We got control ward in it. He's right here. Kind of, kind of wall him off a little bit. Get down the EW. Oh wait, TF's here. Huh. I didn't even see his R. <laughs> I'm so blind. Must have done it after I'd done it, huh? Finally got my Dark Seal. You can definitely get it sooner. The thing is with the Twisted Fate, the odds of me dying are extremely high whenever I commit to something because it can come in and stun card me. Our E and W. EW are such long cooldowns as well that when I drop my load, if he R's in on me, I'd have nothing to fight him with other than Q's, which, let's face it, aren't going to cut it. I don't really think Twisted Fate's strong in the meta. <clears throat> it's just the fact that he's asymmetrically fed is all. Any champion who's asymmetrically fed is going to be able to get a lot done. Having a fight mid. I don't have R though, so. I guess it doesn't matter. They're walking into our fed tryst. Get down my E, try to stop her dashes. I got the shutdown. That's fantastic. Finally. Shut down for Papa. <laughs> that cracks me up when people call their dad Papa. And when they do it unironically. <laughs> Oh, I heard that the other day. It was so funny. And I'm not talking about kids, dude. I'm talking about like full-grown adults. <laughs> oh, man. Red buff, here I come. I'm not launching this way. Imagine if we could throw red buff. That's so cool how I just lost vision of it. That was really neat die <laughs> he died with uh, a full Q and then one Q from the work ground it's hilarious I'm a nice guy what can I say at least red buffs I call my dad Papa <laughs> look at me go for my next good deed of the day I will publicly execute Kaisa Part of a religious ceremony. Everyone will celebrate in delight of that champion's murder. <laughs> Guys is too strong, man. She gets the way of building Hella Blades, and that's meta. She can do all your whole health bar instantly. Oh, I'm dead. Dang. Yeah, she's she's too strong. She doesn't even have below average attack range like Sivir or Callista. As far as I know, she's 550 auto attack range, which is standard. And then I think Sivir's 500, Callista's 525. So, I mean, she you, and plus she's got her magic missile she shoots across the map and then her close range magic missile. So, I don't want to hear you say, oh, she's short range. It doesn't count. Don't give me that. She's everything that's wrong with 80 carries. She she breaks the concept of the kind of the rock, paper, scissors balance dynamic of uh, Squishy's getting bursted or which high kind of glass can and she breaks that concept. She's got an invisibility speed up, a massive jump shield. So if someone actually knows how to play her, you can't simply kill her, she's too slippery. While having Shred, usually Slippery Champions, like let's say a LeBlanc or Zed, they don't necessarily have Shred, they have Burst. Kai'Sa has Shred and Burst and uh, Hyper Mobility Slipperiness, you know? She kind of has it all. Probably the single best AD carry for her carrying with. I ease on cooldown, at least I get the assist. Holy fudge, that did a lot of damage. That did a lot of damage. Let me get down my E so that skank can't jump to me. I'm on ghost and yes, I do regret it. I got down my E and my Q. It wasn't enough. <laughs> Kaisa one shot me. She did 1200 damage instantly. 
Kraken's so freaking good. For our next item, we have to go Leandris because Cho'Gath. Otherwise, I'd probably go for Rylize. It's just as good as it was in Season 13. Super cheap. Really high base stats. Like to have to kite them out, but them having Cho'Gath basically demands me going Leandris instead of Rylize here. Uh, I think Malignant sucks. It doesn't do what you need it to do. It's a, it's a similar concept to Leandris, but it's not it's not percent based damage. So, building Malignants versus a tanky enemy comp just really doesn't feel that good. Yeah, get a skank. Landed it on him right at his Lanius. Got it. The dragon as well. Oh, it's, she's... Bro. Like, <laughs> what? She has two full items, to be fair. I had the drop on her, though, and landed everything. Or, I guess landed Qs. Let's read this item real quick. I'm not that familiar with it. Voltaic... Sword. Dashes and stealth stack energize 75% faster. So it's static. It's lethality static shiv. Energize attack deals 100 physical damage or slows the enemy. Yeah, good luck balancing that, right? Champions like Nefori who are constantly dashing non stop in fights. That's going to be impossible to balance. The item's either going to be too good on champs like Nefori and okay on other people until it's balanced and it's decent on Nefori and not even usable on other people. It's too strong. Simply put, it's hard to get to, like with item, let me put it this way. Item passives, when they're too overly specific, it makes them incredibly niche to where they're not quite worth taking on most champions, but on a few, it's simply too strong. By the way, my whole team just got red buff. Once you have jungle item finished, whenever your buff, you or your teammate takes your buff or a buff, it gives it to the whole team. It's kind of neat. What was I saying? Oh yeah, when it's overly specific, it becomes too niche, and then you can't balance it. They, they gotta get away from items that are too niche. That damage, man. She's about to kill Shaco. He doesn't even realize it. She just got stunned, dashing through my crap, get wrecked, get roasted and toasted. Turd sandwich. If pe when people dash through your E, dash, jump, leap, tumble, flip, flop, are displaced, they get roasted by your E. Any type of movement other than walking or just a speed up will get them turbo stunned and damaged. I need my E back up here. He's always in a bad spot. Even though Shaco's done what he's done, he's not even behind in items. That's the wild thing about Shutdown Gold. He has the same items as Cho'Gath with half the CS and uh, about half the kills. Wild. We're at three dragons too. We can just play Draxel win con. Bard giving away my position. Very cool. 10 out of 10 would do again. Down he goes. Storm Surge finished him off. Oh, I got a ghost away from this. This is... We get the knock on both of them. Trying to light this guy up. She flashed. I don't know if she also healed. If I can click on her, I can see. We were able to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, she did heal. I was going to say, it felt like she got a speed up. I'm kind of okay with that, other than losing the Dark Seal stacks. Getting her Flash and Heal is pretty solid. Cho'Gath also ended up using his Ghost, why Trish splits. There's a lot of issues with uh, the new matchmaking system. Riot's pushing more and more for the automated matches to start, so you're not sitting through Champ Select. Champ Select is so cancer, guys. So first of all, you can't even see people's names anymore. It's been that way for like a year. You can't see their names. Everyone just plays the champion they want to play anyways. So it's like the idea of champ select, and I know you're going to say, but well, I like to counter pick. No one cares. It, it, who cares? Like nine out of 10 people aren't trying to counter pick. Nine out of 10 people are going to pick the one champion they always play or a champion they want to try out, even if it's ranked. So it's like, I think leagues 
moving more and more in the direction of the game just starting. So you queuing up your one or two champions, your one or two rolls before the game starts, and then it automatically just starts the game. So it doesn't give people a chance to dodge, which personally, I think dodging is fine if you can see your teammates' names, because in higher elo, if you have two autofill players, it's like not even worth playing. Like the, the quality of the game is going to be so wildly uh, inconsistent. But since you can't even see your teammates' names, they might as well just remove queuing altogether in terms of champ select. Champ select is completely and utterly pointless if you can't see your teammates' names. I'll tell you that right now. It just lets people dodge. You got to wait through the picks and the bands. And it, it, it ends up costing you. Even if no one dodges, realistically, it's like a seven, eight minute thing. And if people are dodging, you're really spending more time in queue and champ select than you are even in game overall. I suppose that's more of an issue for uh, the higher elo you go, I guess. You'll notice it more and more. Storm Surge is doing some wild damage. Cho'Gath got turbo kited. Badly Andre shredding into him there. Uh, let's get that there. TF can see us though is the thing. Oh, this is bad. Get the launch back. Got him. Oh my god, she's hitting me with missiles. Hopefully she can't reach. We got Draxel apparently. I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> Dude, so much damage to TF. He got tapped down. So we have Dark Harvest, we have some skill ability. First Strike is certainly fine on Talia. I find Dark Harvest feels better early on though. Yeah, get wrecked, dude. Yeah, I'm on Ghost, good luck with that. Yeah, he's having a good time here. Nice try, Cho'Gath. <laughs> Attack on Titan. Chop him up, boys. Oh, no. This is bad. My goodness, the Nefori, man. The th I don't know. Not to be a negative Nelly, but that's just a Rengar. The fact that she has a point-and-click dash. She's literally just a Rengar whose Rengar R is not even a long cooldown. She's not a unique character at all. There's nothing about her that's kit-wise... At least aesthetically, that seems special. It's just she, she kind of does these weird half-assed dashes and tumbles. I'm, I've never really wanted to play that character. She hasn't been appealing to me in the least. Might as well just play Rengar. He looks cooler. His kit's more aesthetically uh, readable. Whether he's throwing the bola, using his heal speed up. Or his heal, which is typically speed up because he uses it as a cleanse when empowered. Uh, or the Rengar R. All of her, every single one of her abilities, she has Evelyn Q. These weird dash tumbles and then just Rengar R that isn't on her ultimate. Let's go for... Oh man, let's go for Rylai's. I think if League wasn't a free-to-play game, they would have less press, less stress and pressure to release new champions. But since it is free-to-play, there's this constant uh, wait them to release boop got him with the knockback down he goes we have Rylize as well so he's getting slowed even if he's on ghost the slow is going to be tremendous skadoosh Got the knock the fuck instantly when she came out. I kind of guessed it. I, I didn't hear it at all. So I was just visually kind of guessing a little bit. If I had Zhonya, certainly we'd, get, we'd have more survivability against the... Uh, what is it? I've been saying N Nyla, I think, but Nefari. Uh, ugly War also known as Ugly Warwick. But if I have my E up, she can't really kill me because when she dashes, she'll get stunned. So it's really just more about if my ease up, then I'm fine. Whew, look at that damage. My goodness. Good grief. 100%, 175% bonus damage against monsters on the E. Each rock does additional damage against monsters on the Q. It's not percent based though. It's just like 
AP and then your E's percent based, which scales so freaking good. Picking these up is when it's Flame Soul map. It's a little speed up and a tiny bit of ability haste. Whoa! Alright, 900. Ah, oh, I almost lived. That last auto didn't get pinched. Kind of stinks dying there. I'll just push Robodon, whatever. If I go in, here's the thing. If I go into fights, absolutely blow somebody up and do a lot of AoE damage, it's worth. Absolutely worth. We'll take that every day of the week. Now, if... Because I feel like if I kill someone and wipe a bunch of other people hard, my teammates should be able to win. If my teammates were heavier and I need to kill like three people to win, then yeah, I'd probably end up picking up a Zhonya's. I'd, I'd rather have more damage since I know I only have to kill one, one and a half people. With that being said, this is some weird splitting. Bard somehow winning the solo fight. I guess the super minions are pulling their weight. They did some damage. How much AD do these have? 330, my god. So they're both hitting. They attack roughly once per second. So she's taking 600 damage roughly per second from those bad boys. With her resistances, probably like close to 300, 300, 400 she was taking. That's a lot. That's it. They quit, man. I think they had enough. That was pretty fun, though. Talia feels good all in all. Overall, though, there's a lot of damage in League. There's so much damage for the Assassin items now and the Mage items. Let's look at the graphs. Looking at damage dealt against enemy champions, we did have the most in the game. For damage taken, I don't think we'll be too shabby because I died plenty. Yeah, damage taken, we are one of the highest on our teams, but roughly tied with most of the other players. Cho'Gath obviously having the most. He took 64,000 self-mitigated. I guess it will be closer to 90,000. Let's see. Wow, that's not that good. That's all he self-mitigated? Huh. I guess he didn't go for Kanic. And for runes, solid value overall. Talia feels good. I'm really happy with her. She's consistent. Sure, you're not going to have 40 kills, 0 deaths like you will on Evelyn if you know what you're doing on Eve. But she doesn't have the same survivability. Eve presses R. She's 10 miles away, and they made it to where her R. After you use R, you go invisible for after like one second. It's really, really fast. Normally, it's like three seconds after you're in combat with enemy champion. Three or four seconds. So Evelyn, much, 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 much higher survivability, much higher KDA. But in terms of raw consistency, how do you outgank Talia? Ranged autos, ranged damage, ranged CC, ranged CC setup, being her E. Uh, she's, yeah, you, she's so hard to outgank. Easily one of the best ganking junglers in the game and her clears are fine i mean her her clears are sl slightly above average as a jungler slightly very slightly and uh because speed wise they're not crazy fast but she is full hp you don't need potion so yeah all in all she's really really good just don't expect to have the highest kd in the world and yeah that's it if you guys enjoyed this talia video don't forget to like comment and subscribe my name is king sticks thank you for watching i'll catch you guys next time